Hello and welcome back to my channel. So we've had the first race of 2021 and it was absolutely incredible and just jam-packed with action. So I decided I was going to go through all three of the categories, Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP and pick who I think were the winners, the losers and the really surprising display or performance from that category so if you want to see who my selections are stay tuned and keep watching so first up we have moto 3 so in peak moto 3 style it was absolute carnage and chaos from the first lap oh my god just so moto 3 it almost hurts so first up we'll start with the winners from the race and I don't just necessarily mean the fact that they did actually win the race but we're going to start off with Red Bull KTM IO. So Massey has been really hit and miss for the past few seasons. He's had some victories but he's had a lot of crashes and he's not really lived up to his potential. But I think coming into this when he's got someone like Pedro Costa who's kind of got on the bike and absolutely just blown it out of the water has really put a rocket up his ass. So I think the fact that they managed to get a one two and them both coming into the squad and this being their first year with them I think it is absolutely incredible that they managed to just be almost, almost dominate the race they were constantly near the front in the, in the front pack and I I am actually really looking forward to seeing what they can do because I didn't have either of them as my picks for my championship contenders or even my rookies. I didn't actually, I didn't have Red Bull on my, on my radar almost. I kind of just brushed them off as just in, just another Moto3 team and yeah they're a bit hit and they might be a bit hit and miss don't really count on them but hey I'm happy to be proven wrong by Moto3 once again. So the second one is that I have for Moto2 has to be Prustel. It's been a while since we've seen Prustel actually getting both bikes in the points and even being like in the front group. But the fact that De Pasquier and Yamanaka both managed to get into the points and it wasn't just like scraping into the points. Both of them were kind of, well, De Pasquier especially was substantially in the points with a 10th finish and Yamanaka came in 14. So it's not as if they were both like just cutting the mustard, both just getting inside the points. They, they were in the gigantic front group and I'm I'm really happy to see Prustel doing well getting points finishes again because it does feel like such a long time since they were one of the one of the main teams because I got into I got into this properly like really really completely submerged in Moto 3 uh, in 2018 so I was really used to seeing them on the podium and on the top step and even just in the points with uh, Cornfile and Bez so this is really nice to be able to see them back in the points three years later. I I hope they can keep it up I hope that this is just one of many point scoring finishes and it's just gonna build their confidence from there but I guess with Moto3 like any of the more two more GP categories never say never you never know what's going to happen so we'll move on to the losers of the Moto3 category and I'll start off with the ones who have no fault of their own it's got to be John McPhee, Jeremy Alcoba and Andrea Migno so if he oh, I just I can't actually believe it but I also can because it's just so stereotypically Moto3 to have someone absolutely full-on wrecking ball into three really well three really big hitters and big names of the category but that unfortunately that is just Moto3 so 
it was an early an early race collision for Artegas just got overconfident I would say misjudged it and full-on skittled John and Andrea and Jeremy and it was just it was heartbreaking to watch because when you've come into this year and you want it to be your year I mean all of them come into it and they want it to be their year as fighting for the world championship but you come into it and you're one of the main contenders like John and your race is over before it's even got going and through absolutely no fault of your own you you couldn't avoid someone else getting overconfident into a corner and just like completely <laughs> blowing you into the gravel trap another one of my losers from Motor 3 has to be red bull ktm tech 3 both of their riders crashed and Ayumu's race came to a premature end when he was doing so well with one lap to go and he was doing so well and he just crashed and it was heartbreaking I felt a little bit I felt a little bit teary I'm not gonna lie and Dennis was an early faller who rejoined but rejoined and finished in 20th so it's just heartbreaking when you, they're doing so well and they make a slight mistake and go down but again that is just the world of motorbike racing one small mistake and you've completely ruined your race or the race of you and others or even just someone else's race but we learn we move on first race of the year anything can happen my surprise of Moto 3 has got to be Niccolo Antonelli which seems a little bit weird for the fact that Antonelli is a podium finisher and a race winner but his performance for the last couple of years has just been has just vanished like his form just vanished and then he moves into the Reale Avintia squad and he's finished and he finished sixth like mad and not just that he finished not even a second behind Jama Masia, who was the race winner. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a wait and see to see how Antonelli does and see exactly how his performance goes for the rest of the year. Fingers crossed that he carries on and he, there's this is just a, a confidence boost. Fingers crossed that he doesn't crash and break something like a collarbone because I don't actually know how he still has a collarbone. He seems to have broken it every single year, at least once. But fingers crossed that he doesn't do himself an injury this year and he doesn't lose the confidence that he's gained over this weekend. I really hope that there's more well, I kind of hope that there's more Moto3 races like that, but also I don't think it's good for my health to be that stressed for that long. We'll wait and see, I guess. So next up is Moto2. So my winners for Moto2 are going to be pretty obvious, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so first up, we're going to start off with Sam Lowe's. So Sam absolutely dominated from the very start of the race. I mean, he practically ran away with it before anyone could really get a, get a chance to get near him. So I'm really glad that I put him down for one of my um, predictions. I do think he started off this year with that added confidence from the back end of last year with the victories. Um, I do think that he's actually going to be formidable. The way that he's going, the performance that he put in just throughout the weekend he had a couple of minor slips he had that crash in free practice but 
wasn't anything major he didn't cause himself any injuries he didn't completely ruin the bike so that was fantastic um i think and i hope that this is going to be a new and improved sam Lowe's and we will actually be able to get to see him fighting at the front more often and spending less time in the gravel trap as we kind of got used to for the past couple of years it'll also silence a lot of the people who are very vocal on on a social media especially twitter who tend to go down sam's throat at the slightest little incident and mistake that he makes i'm really looking forward to them being completely silenced for once so my second winner of Moto2 has to be Fabio Di Antonio. I like this is the the most fairy tale thing to happen. The first race back after losing Fausto and a Grassini bike is on the podium. And not just that, the first Grassini bike to be on the podium since Sam was racing in that team. So it was two Grassini boys together on the podium for Fausto. Like, you couldn't write it. It was just so beautiful. And Fabio just put his absolute heart and soul into that race. And it was because he wanted to, he wanted to do something to honour Fausto. He, he wanted to be, to show him that, um, to show his appreciation because he was with Fausto when he was in, uh, Moto3, he uh, was with Jorge Martin in 2018 before he before they both graduated into Moto2. So it was it was just such a fitting tribute and I I nearly shed a tear, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, so they are my, my winners for for Moto2. My losers uh losers is quite hard because there wasn't particularly there wasn't loads like loads of them that really disappointed. I think my main two have got to be Chavi Vieje and Lorenzo Baldassari. Both of whom crashed. Both of whom you they're both really like quite an odd case together because they're both really good riders, but they make these stupid mistakes and completely ruin their races so both of them ended up crashing um baldassari even ever since he left the academy he seems to have just not been able to find his feet and he he was one of the championship favorites of moto2 last year and then just had what a podium in the first race and then like just there was nothing and Vieja is quite a similar one he's he's gone from having podiums and being at the front to to not finishing races and it's, it's really weird and it's really unfortunate because they are such talented guys I don't know what's gone wrong uh, I do hope that they find their way this year and it's not just almost a waste but unfortunately they they are my losers for for Moto 2 this year or this this race and lastly my surprise of the race has got to be Cameron Bobier. like I I don't know what I was expecting oh I wasn't actually expecting much however he came into it and came 11th. That's pretty good going for someone who has just come into the Moto2 paddock, like rookie. And it, it's not even just that he's come into Moto2, he's come into a completely new paddock and a new team. He doesn't really know. I, I don't think he knows many people. And 
to get on that bike and actually get into the points and get significantly into the points is really bloody impressive. So, yeah, he's definitely got to be my surprise of Qatar or whatever they're calling that race. I can't remember. They call them so many different random weird things. But uh, yeah, Cameron Bobier, and I'm going to have to give an honorary shout out to Ralph Fernandez because he was absolutely bloody magnificent and I, I can't say I was surprised. I knew, I, I knew he would do magical things on, on that bike and in Moto2. I just wasn't expecting it from the first race. So, lovely surprise, but a surprise nonetheless. So last but not least, we have Moto GP. So there's actually quite a few people I class as losers in the Moto GP class for uh, the first Qatar race, but there are also a few that I would class as winners. So start off with winners, definitely Maverick Vinales. I've also got Joan Mia on my list. So I had to put Maverick on my list because Compared to last year and compared to a few of the races, especially in 2019, that like that was a completely perfect race for him. He just was almost picture perfect for the entire thing. And he'd had such a good weekend as well. His qualifying was pretty decent. And then to go into the race and to manage to get away so well, because he, I don't think he has ever done a, a start quite like that. But I, yeah, I was really impressed and I'm quite glad that I put him on my little um, predictions list now because I thought I was taking quite a, quite a gamble by having him on because I know he's very unpredictable, he's very hit and miss, but I thought that especially after the fact that he's got married, he's got a child on the way, I thought that that might be that little turning point that he needed, that bit of um, support that he needed. And hopefully it will continue and he will just be able to go on for the rest of the year and be fighting at the front still, be able to qualify well. Who knows? I guess we will see. But he's definitely one of my winners from from the Qatar weekend. Um, the other one is definitely Joan Mir. His qualifying is pretty, it's pretty terrible and he knows it. And I think it's always been a bit of a Suzuki issue. Uh, even last year, they were world champions, but their qualifying was not great. They, it wasn't often that you saw a Suzuki on the, on the front row at the start of a race. At the end, yeah, maybe, maybe so, but the, at the start it was just they were normally like three two or three rows back so yeah he started in 10th but then he was running at the front by like the middle of the race and he's very much a silent assassin and he just kind of just swoops in and you just see his name very gradually crawling up the up the timings until suddenly you're focusing on the front three and there's just a blue 36 coming towards you coming towards the screen and you're just like oh Joan <laughs> so it's fair enough that he lost out on that absolutely mental um drag race down the straight down the uh, start finish race but I don't think the Suzuki would have ever stood a chance against the Ducatis because in a straight line they're, they're pretty formidable. It's just it is almost a shame that they don't have that for the majority of the rest of the the sections so it was it was a bit of a shame that Duran did miss out on that podium but I think the fact that he had managed to get back from 10th position on the grid to to be in the front to be in the, uh, the front pack and within podium contention until that like very last moment. I think that's pretty incredible, and it does it, it does show exactly why he is a world champion, why he is the reigning world champion. So yeah, I think it's going to be 
interesting to see how he gets on and they really it is a case of if Suzuki does get their qualifying sorted they like it, it's kind of over for the rest of them but it's yeah there's gotta hope that they get it sorted who knows so my losers for the Qatar race have to be Jack Miller and the KTMs, the Red Bull KTMs. I don't, I don't understand what happened with Jack. Like, it, it just, it boggles my tiny mind. How did he go from being on the front row to ninth? Ninth at the end of the race. I just, I just don't get it. Yeah. <sighs> I don't really ha I don't really have much to say about that. I was really disappointed because we were like so many people were so hyped to see Jack possibly get his first win with Ducati and we all came into this weekend almost thinking oh Jack's the one to be Jack's Jack's the one to be definitely. And then yeah. Ninth. Weird. Also another weird one, KTM. Neither of their guys did well. So so Miguel Oliveira, who is a two-time Moto GP race winner, ended Sunday in 13th. And Brad, who's Brad Binder, who is a one-time Moto GP winner, was 14th. Like what the hell? Like they both won races last year and this year the KTM's just like flopped what the hell so I I feel sorry for them because I don't I, I don't think it's anything to do with their riding I think it's something to do I, the conditions weren't great the, the maybe the bike setup wasn't ideal I, I don't know maybe there was I don't know what the reason was. I just, I'm lost for words. The same with what happened with Franco Morbidelli. Like, so that wasn't Frankie's fault. And I knew, I, I point blank knew that there had to be something wrong with that bike. And the fact it was a terminal issue, but Frankie being Frankie and like all round good guy, amazing guy was like, oh yeah, out of respect to my team, I'm, I'm not gonna just stop. I'm actually going to keep going and I'll, I'll do the entire race and just get what I can out of the bike and then we'll sort it after that. And, to, and they found out on the grid as well. So it was, it's just, it's so disappointing when something like that happens. Like there's an issue with the bike or, a mechan or like something like that. I don't know. It just makes me really sad when things like that happen because it's just no fault of their own and they try so hard and obviously the teams try so hard too and then it to just go like that it's really sad anyway my surprises i have two surprises for motor gp has to be the rookies of jorge martin and nea bastianini jorge martin's ducati actually just from 14th to 4th like what the hell it was absolutely incredible to watch and I'm really like I'd love to see if that could be replayed again this weekend or in the future I think he, it won't be particularly long before he's on the podium if he can keep that up and like that has got to be one of his best starts ever he said in his um in his hundred hundred races that he's done in his career that is his best start ever which is saying something but also like it's gonna be i guess the adrenaline of it being your first motor gp race is gonna add to it but it, it's not often that you see someone make up 10 places within like a corner um my other one yes a near bastianini i the pair of them that the pair of them did just phenomenally well a like, koi martin came in 15th. I think he did have an issue, but I can't remember. 
And Anita Bastianini, who came in in 10th. 10th on the Sponsorama. I... Mad. Definitely shows why he is the reigning Mortal 2 World Champion. Boy is not bad on a bike. Um, so yeah, I think that's just going to be the start of a very long and fruitful career for the both of them. I am desperate to see how they do for the rest of the season. Like, absolutely desperate. It's going to be just amazing. I can't wait. That is all I have for this week. Um, I will try and get another video out next week. Possibly the slightly more reasonable time. Who knows, I haven't actually decided when I want to be able to schedule or when I want to be putting videos out. So if you have any opinions on when you would like to see my videos go out, please drop them in the comments. Also, feel free to tell me who you think, who were your winners, losers and surprises from all three classes. And I will see you.